So this is a Galactic Mayan forecast for the new year that we're moving into on the 26th of July 2023. So there is a lot to say, there is a lot to share and I guess the first thing to grid you into is like how this stuff works and I know if you've been watching for a while if you've been tuning in to galactic mind astrology for a while this might be familiar information but I've always found that like the more revisiting I've done over the 10 years that I've been almost 10 years nine years that I've been working with the modality the deeper it's gone so we have this Zolkin nine month human being evolution spin which as a human being that's our primary cycle of time this like experience that we had in utero when we were from conception to birth whew, one cycle and though we don't mark it we are constantly going through that evolutionary cycle because our evolu evolutionary cycle is held within that nine month framework because conception to birth nine months primary evolutionary code which is why the wave spells are so powerful to grid into because <clears throat> the wave spells are 13 day segments of that nine month evolutionary code and the reason that we have this 13 significance and we split the 260 days Olkin cycle into these 13 rhythm into the 13 rhythm so maybe not the why, but it's the mirror of the 13 moon experience that we have or the 13 bleed experience that we have as we move through the sun, round the sun. We don't go through the sun. Maybe we do, who fucking knows? Um, so the second primary cycle of time that we experience as human beings on this planet is that our planetary body, the planetary body that we are, we're made of is moving around the sun and that takes a year but that year is split into 13 moons months of 28 days so as we go through this journey of a year we have our personal nine month human evolution code and this 13 moon experience as we journey around the sun The ancient, many ancient civilizations, including the ancient Maya, the ancient Egyptians or Kemet, the people of Kemet, um, celebrated the new year in alignment with Sirius. So Sirius is a profound, a profoundly significant astral body for most ancient cultures. Whether, you know, you can see it from so many different sides, whether it's simply because it's the brightest star in the sky. So all of the mythology had to be drawn to it in one way or another because it was the brightest star in the sky. Or if you see it more esoterically and you recognize that everything's a mirror, it's fascinating that there is this one star that's more prominent in the sky. And, you know, a lot of ideas point to the notion that Sirius is our counterpart star system. So our Sun and Sirius mirror orbit as we all move around the galaxy, the galactic centre. So we have this interesting mirrored experience with Sirius. But what we also find, <clears throat> if we are watching the sky, is that Sirius goes into the underworld for a while. Sirius disappears from our sight looking in the sky for a while which again if we look at astrology as significance in mirrored pattern it takes us to the underworld you know this like disappearance from the sky the re-emergence that happens and this is what the Lionsgate portal is all about the Lionsgate portal is all about Sirius and has been in this alignment with Sirius. So on the 26th of July, around the 26th of July, Sirius is born again. So we see Sirius once again, 
And these are the, re the resurrection cords. And this is why ancient culture celebrated this moment as the new year, because it was the rebirth of this celestial body that has held the most significance for humanity for as long as we can remember. So 26th of July is when this new journey around the sun celebration begins because we reach that point of alignment with Sirius again. So it's like, ah, we're back to the start. And then the 13 moon journey around the sun begins anew. So not only do we have this 13 moon, this 13 day rhythm, we also have a 13 year rhythm that we are constantly journeying through. So, <clears throat> In 2019, we began a new 13 year journey. And this is really significant because, you know, these, the 13 moon cycles and the 13 year cycles, these are about us as a collective. And what you find usually when you journey in the nine month stuff, when you journey in the 13 day wave spells, the thing that's so profound about it <clears throat> is the level of synchronicity. And synchronicity really is this like intensely personal experience with the divine. It's a, it's a divine coincidence that only has incredibly deep significance for you as an individual element of this reality. This is why synchronicity is so profound because it's like, you know, two people can experience the same thing, but for one of them, because it has such a deep, meaningful coincidence, it's a calling card for them, but for the other, it's kind of meaningless. But each one of us has this really deep, personal, evolutionary relationship with the divine and with the outer reality and the inner reality. <clears throat> but then when we move into the 13 moon and the 13 year cycles, it's a bit more traditional astrological themes that we are collectively evolving, which doesn't mean that it's not personal. And you can feel the synchronicity in terms of what has happened since 2019. So for us as a collective, we've been living in a very interesting place in my lifetime. So I'm 31 now on this realm, <laughs> fucking hell. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, in my lifetime, <clears throat> I guess looking at the generations that I've had access to, grandparents' generation, war children, poverty within my line, both sides, um, and all of the, so on a collective level, we've had the world wars, although there's war everywhere all the time, the world wars have been lived by people that are on the planet at present. So that very significant moment of the descent, which a lot of people would say was a manufactured thing that led to X, Y, Z in terms of suppression, deepening into trauma, human pain, and the perfect evolutionary gateway. Then we have the next generation down, the children of the war. So the, the children that, you know, the boomers that kind of got to live on the back of industry and finances and everything kind of rising following the war. But what that gave rise to was quite a shallow and I'm talking in Western terms here you know I'm talking in my personal experience of my bloodline in essentially the fucking white wonky lands but the white wonky lands being the origin I guess of mind that's come from dissociation from heart as a result of pain so really when we look at the West we are looking at the formulation of mentality which is the force that is breaking the planet apart 
and is the force that we're learning to harness through that to be able then to live in alignment with heart and soul so this beautiful intellect integrated into heart gives new earth vibration but boomers experiencing this like whoa we've, we've kind of got enough money you know this like the poverty line's gone up <clears throat> but that giving rise to severe depression and unfulfillment and then you've got the younger generations that have the grandparents that were in the war the parents that lived kind of a meaningless existence not dissing any of that but like the chasing of the carrot hasn't really led us to where we wanted to go so then you've got this generation that are like beginning to open into heart spirituality <clears throat> the rise of the internet which has created global community the barrier between self and rest of world becoming less of a strong thing and i'm fully aware of all of the layers of privilege but this is also a reflection of mentality that we're here to transform now i'm saying all of this because that leads us into 2019 and what happened in 2019 you know 2019 covid 19 it was the seed of the beginning of the covid story and we can look at that from many different perspectives in terms of all the controversial shit that I'm not going to get into because that's not what I'm here to share about. And for me, my experience on this path has taught me to always go to the highest octave perspective of what this is about. So the highest octave perspective exists outside of duality. It is always in service to evolution whether or not somebody purposefully decided to hurt you, us, whatever, there's always like a divine overseer, orchestrator that's like, yo, pouring that into your pot because you need to grow. So 2019, COVID plans your story began. And this is all about <clears throat> the underworld became burst on the surface. All those years of suppression that the war children and the subsequent generation lived through, all those coping mechanisms that were wired into the genes to ensure that people stopped feeling and thus gave birth to this crazy materiality, <clears throat> it all started to fall away. Breakdown central, mental health crisis, all the mess people literally feeling fearful to the point of not leaving their homes like all that collective fear and pain went Poof! and there had to be a situation to bring that out the 13 year process that we moved into the archetype that governs this 13 year process that we as a collective are now in is the wizard So the wizard <clears throat> is the alchemist. Alchemy is about the transmutation of base metals into gold. <clears throat> An alchemist cannot transform without the metal. We innately have the metal. We have all these unprocessed experiences within the collective human psyche. And the process of us as a collective body is about remembering that we as humans are literally able to alchemize because we are creator consciousness. So the wizard teaches us that we are creator consciousness through the alchemical journey. The gold is the ability to operate consciously as opposed to having all of these scary things in the subconscious in our past in our collective past that we've not looked at that we've not processed because we're scared of feeling the pain we're scared of owning the pain and so we project all of our pain all of our stories left right and center and get lost in a hall of mirrors until 
we take fierce responsibility for our personal metal and recognize that our personal metal is the gift that gives us the doorway to our liberation. This 13 year cycle is incredibly significant because it opens the door to humans beginning to operate through multidimensional awareness. This, this like, we create it, we get to all these things the majority of these things have been created from a place of unconscious manifestation, accidental shadow teaching mess, wounds passed on, so social ideology burst through dissociation from pain, accidental, accidental, accidental. But what this 13 year cycle gives us the opportunity to do and is growing within us is this understanding that, oh, when we process that, then we can create that. And it's been interesting to see also that there's been this like, as we've been going through this kind of collective awakening process, we don't want to go there. Love and light. No. Love and light. I want to create. I want to do. I want to do. And this is growing and growing and growing and getting more and more painful and getting more and more messy until we actually go, all oh, right, fuck that off for a bit. Let's focus on the alchemy. So between 2022 July to 2023 July, we've been in this process of the red self-existing moon. This year has been about <clears throat> the resetting of our collective foundation to the divine feminine. What do I mean by that? Don't mean gender. I mean energetics. We have polarity of energetics within us. It's part of the human thing. And the polarity of energetics has got different characteristics on each side. We live in polarization to then transmit, transform into unification. So the divine feminine energy is about like surrender, transformation, purification, and living in flow, living in cycles, which is in stark contrast to the masculine, beautiful, creative energy that is like, bam, we do the things, you know, we, re, we, we build, we create, we are on, which is an amazing place for humanity to be. But the way that we've been operating is having that energy as our foundation. And that's where humanity has gone dead wonky because if we're not utilizing that energy in honor of the flowing cyclical vibration we're just going to fall off we're going to burn out we're going to destroy things it's all going to get messy but when that creative force is in devotion to the cycle that we're in okay now is the time for transformation for inner hermit breakdown breakthrough then when that comes again when that force to create comes again We've gained the wisdom of the breakdown and integration. So the red self-existing moon year has been teaching us and guiding us to have that cyclical purifying experience as the foundation for us as a collective body. That then, as we move into this year, for example, the white overtone wizard year, that doing energy is coming from a space of embodied, again, really big piece of the, the feminine wisdom, embodied understanding. Is it the time to do that? Oh no, it's the time to do that. And this is reflected in the seasons, you know, it's like this whole thing of the 
it's like the the feminine energy is matter it's how things work on the earth's plane when we look at nature when we observe the cycles of time when we look at our bodies the higher mind is the masculine this like incredible ab ability to manifest through vision and action so this year the way that it works with the archetypes is that it goes one two three four one two three four one two three four one for the 13 year cycles one archetype another archetype another archetype another archetype back to the first so we are operating with four archetypes as we move through this 13 year cycle the initiatory which oversees the whole thing, which is the energy of the white wizard. And then three other archetypes. We are back this year in 2023, July to 2024, July, with, for the first time since our 13 year cycle began, we are reconnecting with the higher octave of the white wizard energy. So what that could mean potentially there may be echoes of the 2019 piece because not everybody in our collective has been going to the highest perspective we've still been operating in real duality so we therefore haven't really got the memo so there may be some revisits of that stuff but if we have been listening, if we have been alchemizing, if we have been taking the medicine, then we have the potential to begin to build the overtone, the fifth year, the fourth year, the self-existing, the foundation, divine feminine foundation, bam. Fifth year, back with the white wizard, it's time to build. It's time to start utilising the gold, utilising the alchemy process, utilising ourselves as multidimensional beings, you know, like the fourth year, the foundation, and then what do you do once you've built the foundations? Once you've dug the foundations, you start to build the structure. So this year, if we've been listening, if we've been honouring, we're going to have more capacity, more invitation, more space to begin to build the new earth that we've been experiencing the seeds of. Yellow seed is another one of the archetypes that we journey with through this 13 year process. But if not, the underworld needs to be cleared within this 13 year cycle and it will be. And you know, the other big thing that is coming in really strong for me personally is this understanding of patience. You know, it's like things aren't immediate. You know, I don't really buy into this quantum idea that you can just like shift your reality at the click of a finger. It's like, mate, we are wired way too fucking complex to be able to do that. Like the whole way that the quantum world operates is through mentality and our mentality is traumatized and tied in knots. So yeah, if it was a human that was a complete blank slate that was operating through quantum reality, then perhaps, bam, we could shift to a different reality. But whilst all of this is knotted as fuck and has been lived in, the idea of a quantum leap, we don't, I don't feel that we have that as a potential. And it also just feels like more of the love and light brigade, like dissociation. I'll just pray and then it'll come. No, no, no. I went off on such a tangent then. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, what we're allowing to happen this year is that we get to we get to move to a different octave of our experience. Oh yeah, and the patience thing. Um, so it's going to take time. You know, we're all at different phases of evolution as a collective body, and that's exactly as it's meant to be. You know, like when a baby develops, 
bits of the body develop at different rates and it's all crucial and it's all perfect and that bit has to develop then so that that bit can develop then if that bit didn't develop there then that couldn't happen that can't happen without that so it is all exactly as it should be and that's the big thing is it's like patience and trust like yeah things might get messy but whilst everything's been messy we've been popping off We've been journeying our own shit, but we found each other. We've been feeling this new experience. We've been seeing it begin to manifest. So there's gonna be loads more of that. But also, if there's more shit that we need to journey, if there's more stuff that we have to transform as individual creators that are not victims, cause there's no such thing as a victim, there's only an evolutionary strand that we chose to lean into to allow that aspect of the collective subconscious to come to light. If there's more of that that we need to look at, the universe is gonna keep lovingly giving it to us. And our greatest service to the collective is to do our personal work. So if there's more, welcome it. Thank you for the opportunity for making this part of me conscious. And as I make this part of me conscious and I heal this stuff, I'm doing my work for the collective. It's not about holding the circles. It's not about the outward work. It's not about creating the school. It's not about the external, whatever the thing is that comes naturally. The real work is the shit we don't wanna do. And that's generally within our relationship with ourselves. Like, fuck me, the past few years, since 2019, mate. The level of my own toxicity that I have had to witness and take responsibility for is profound. And it nearly killed me quite a few times but now what's beginning to be experienced in those aspects of my life as a result of that is off the chart but I couldn't have had this without that and you know I think there's something important to recognize within the feminine when it comes to that you know we are and you know people that have got a womb and that have the extra sensitivity and emotionality that comes with that it's our superpower but it also means that when it comes to like the emotional cleanup mission there is deeper work for us to do and similarly you know people that are more aligned with the masculine polarity whether it's biological or energetic there is more work around mentality that is being asked of you to break through the limitations of mind to rewire the consciousness and it all feeds into one another but it's big work you know and if you're tuning into this and if you are of a more i don't know personal development perspective it's your invitation but the big pieces, you know, that are, again, our responsibility to grid into, what's my medicine? And I don't mean what's your medicine that you bring to the world. Like, what do you, when you need support, what do you use? Like, for me, it's homeopathy. Like, I'm always in therapy, and I love it. But homeopathy is like my ultimate go-to. It's the thing that has always been you know, and big ups to pay Dryder for bringing that into my life when I was 17, man. But that's always been the medicine that's really supported me. And then ast astrology, like homeopathy and astrology are my two sort of go-tos, and EFT. So they're my three, and interestingly, that's then what, I don't bring homeopathy to the world, I know quite a bit about it, but you know, they're the two that I bring to the world. But the reason is because they're the things that I use. So what are your tools? Not in a dissociative, I want to feel better, I want to put a plaster on it way. In a like, how do I do the work? What are your tools? 
who do you do your tools with? You know, who are your people that are the ones that'll tell you the truth, that'll call you out on your own bullshit? You know, and often it's funny because they're the people that we end up falling out with, but actually they're the people that we want at our table. Yes, to have the love, yes, to have the joy, yes, to have the connections, but really when this shit hits the fan and we spiral into the abyss, we need people that are gonna be able to hold us accountable so that we can then hold ourselves accountable. So it's really important for us to feel into like where those things are and, and have them like written down or something. Because again, when we spiral, it's really hard to like hold on to, where do I go with this pain? Because I'm in so much pain. But also, finding that place of listening you know, listening to our spirituality is going to be key this year because it's a wizard year, you know, this multidimensional human thing. So making sure that we're doing our work and doing our alchemy because that's what the wizard really brings, but then also creating that space for the multi multidimensionality of the reality that we live in because that is such a big aspect of what this wizard energy is bringing you know as we move further through the 13 year cycle as we move up the octaves like things are going to get more and more cosmic because that's where we're at so it's about the two like doing the deep work but also opening to spirit and opening to being guided by spirit and opening to moving through this reality in a different way you know away from the collective ideas that the previous two generations have brought through and i know that there's a lot of people within both those generations that have been doing the work for ages and that are liberated humans and that come with very different seeds you know and such deep wisdom for us all but yeah i think that's all that wants to be said oh one final thing just to throw in a little magical offering that I've got going on at the minute. So with all of that in mind, with all of that in heart, with all of that in awareness, <laughs> the cat's doing the thing again where she's like, I'm clawing on the floor and you've got really heavy doors. And usually when I do that, you open the door and you're not opening the door. She's giving up now. I will be with you in a minute, Molly. Um, so yeah. These collective cycles of time, these collective energies are also personal to us and we have our own personal cycles of time and themes that we will be journeying as individual people as we move through this coming year. And for the first time, I've had this like really deep desire open within me to facilitate a session that's like two hours long, it's a one-to-one -one session, where we really dive deep into your Mayan astrology, like who you are in the Mayan calendar, but with particular focus on like, what are the themes for the year for you? And then doing some shadow work and some alchemy around the things that are most probably gonna be the themes that you're journeying. So it's kind of like we do the work preemptively and then also reading into you know what you're going to be invited to birth and to bring this year and doing some visioning around that because this is the year of the build the beginning of the building so yeah like and if you've journeyed with me you know I am a strong channel and the energy that I bring in you know is pretty like ancient future vibed and Particularly with readings, I've been having a lot of reflections recently from people that I gave readings to, you know, years ago that have said, you know, it literally, it shifted something and put them on the, the timeline that is, you know, that's been incredibly fruitful. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, it's funny with these things like channeling because you don't know, like, I don't know what I'm saying. And nine times out of 10, anything that, I'm said, that I've said has been forgotten by me as a personal human. But for 
the receiver, I think particularly utilising this framework as, as a galactic mind calendar, it's profound. So yeah, I'll pop the link below for that. I send you so much love. I'm so grateful that you tune in to these videos. I'm so grateful that we are journeying this conscious evolution process together. I'm so grateful for the Mayan calendar and the way that it has, you know, become such a powerful, loving force in my life and that I'm able to transmit that and kind of share that with you guys and, you know, share this really profound beautifully loving and peaceful framework for navigating reality it's like what the fuck spirit nice one <laughs> oh yeah mm. so i send you so much love and i send you blessings for the new year and i'm really excited to see where we land this time in 2024 oof big love